Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thanks for being here. If you get a chance and you're new here, please subscribe, pop down in the description, and check out the website. We even have a member's ride section that you can contribute to. Today, we're doing a dash pad removal. Now, as you can see here, the dash pad's in good condition. But I did choose to go back to the 67 or prior look. So I'm going to pull the dash pad off of here along with the doors and everything else. But I thought if I'm removing the dash pad today, it's a good time to show the procedure for removal. Probably next week, I'm putting a dash pad, a new one in my buddy Casey's car that you'd seen earlier on in the other videos. So we'll do a dash pad installation video also. So. Let's get rocking and rolling. I haven't done this in a while, so hopefully I remember every screw, but we'll learn together because it's been a while, but it's really not a bad procedure. So let's get it on. First thing we're gonna do is remove all of our knobs here first, then we'll get the glove box, the ashtray. I'm gonna unbolt the steering column, let it lower, and there's some Phillips screws around here. So let's do the knobs first. With your fresh air knobs, you just pull them and they'll pop off, okay? That's all they do. So we'll put these, well, yeah, put them down here for now. Your emergency flashers, the ones that pull out and on, just turn them counterclockwise very gently. You feel it break loose, which break isn't a good word, I guess, but, and they unthread, okay? Headlight, same way. Your headlights pull off and on. Just turn counterclockwise. You'll feel it stop because it is the dimmer for your dash. And then you'll feel it break loose, unthread, and it'll fall on the floor. Just like that. Windshield washers, ah, windshield wipers, turn counterclockwise, unthread. Okay. Wow, this one's long. There we go. There's a little male end that sticks out of there. So let's pick these knobs up before something stupid happens. And I'll put them elsewhere. Your ashtray, slide out, push down on a tab. I'll show you in a minute. And it slides out. There's your tab right there. See how it pushes this down? Okay. Open your glove box up, take your Phillips screwdriver. Oh, that's been on there a while. I'll speed the film up here. Now, once you loosen them four screws up, you're just sliding this off. There's just little arms that slide into these, okay? With that aside, start loosening the Phillips screws around here. You have two up here, and then there's more across the bottom. So let me bring you in closer. You have one here. Now everybody does this in a different order. So whatever order you feel like taking everything apart in, it's entirely up to you. Just don't lose your screws. Just a little like that. Oh. Okay, now there's some underneath. I'll show you. Okay, this was a tricky camera angle. This is the underneath of the dash. This is the passenger side. So let's take these out. The reason I am did this, this car is getting completely stripped down for the most part. So I figure I might as well show everything I'm doing. You can go along the journey with me. I don't know if you were with me on my first mild restoration was the 73 Super Beetle. So I did the whole series and it seemed to help people a lot. And maybe some of them enjoyed just watching, you know, what I was doing. 
Okay. One right here. Remember, don't lose your screws. You know the deal. Let's move the camera. Have these on the driver's side. Now, what we gotta do, and I'll show you, here and here, we have two bolts to take the steering column down. So let me grab a ratchet. These are 13 millimeter. We're gonna just loosen these two bolts, bring them down so the steering column can relax and get out of the way a little bit. Okay, steering column's loosened up and that will be out of the way for us. All right, what we have to do next, we are under the trunk. Of course, my trunk's off, so it makes it a little easier. We're gonna take these three screws loose and a 10 millimeter bolt and pull the fresh air box out of the way. So let's do that next. Three Phillips screws. Remember, try to keep your screws all somewhat organized. The nice thing too, while this is all apart, take your time and clean this fresh air box all out because there will be debris and dust and dirt. So that's a good idea to clean that all out. Let's get our 10 millimeter bolt here. Should have zipped it with the ratchet, but I was being stupid. Whoop, let me drop the nut and the washer. I'll put them up here for now. We can take that hose off or I'm trying to work with one hand. There we go. Okay. Here's your cables. I'll show you something there in a second. Now, if you want to, you can leave these connected up. It's entirely up to you, okay? They crisscross here. If you look inside, they crisscross right here. So try to remember that, maybe take a picture of it. But I'm gonna disconnect my cables because I want them out of the way. You don't have to to remove the dash. You can leave this just hanging here while you're doing it if you need to. I'm gonna take mine off. Just a Phillips screw. And you have this little bracket here. Remember, take a picture with your phone so you know where all this stuff goes. See, it just fell. Where are you at? There we go so that you remember how this stuff goes back together. This will even slide out, I believe. Yes, it will, so that stays on, okay? Then these just come right off like that. This one's stuck a little, there we go, okay? No big deal, just don't rush and be a bonehead. Like I said, there's probably no specific order for certain things. It's just the way I do it, okay? These hook up to your vents in the dash. So, ooh, thought it was a hornet. They just snap onto there. This one a tug. Right there, got it on that. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna remove the eight millimeter bolt off of the strap that holds the glove box in. And I can assure you, I'm gonna drop that bolt. I didn't. What do you know? 
and there's the strap. And of course, there's the glove box. Comes right out. And a side note, this glove box is in beautiful condition. Oh, I'm very happy about that. Okay, boom. Here's the levers for the glove box, the little arms that you screwed off the glove box, okay? Remember them, okay? We gotta take these off. Let me try to reach inside. Just like that. Come on, cooperate. I'm gonna take these off completely because I'm gonna sand them down and paint them. And see, there they are. Okay, now we are near the speedometer cluster, okay? So what I'm gonna do first, now make sure, wait a minute, take photos with your phone of all the wiring here. Just in case you knock some loose or anything weird happens, you'll know where everything goes. Stop, take some photos. You'll thank yourself later. Okay, I'm gonna unclip this from the housing. Let this hang down. And I forgot to say in the beginning, so I'll put a little thing at the beginning, disconnect your battery, okay? But I already put that at the beginning, so don't forget. Now, we have a 10 millimeter bolt here and one down the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect those bolts so I can pull this out of the way of the speedometer. Take that loose. washer okay this will come out of the way you don't need to disconnect the wiring or anything okay just be gentle with everything okay here is all the wiring for the speedometer this is where I suggest you pause take a photo and then if you want you can disconnect the wires and get it out of the way let's disconnect the speedometer cable Just unscrews and pull it out of the way, and there you go. So we're gonna pause. Whoop! Oh, is my head in your way? We're gonna pause, take a picture of the wiring, okay? I'm going to try to cheat a little. I'm gonna take these Phillips screws off on each side, like you see in the picture here. That's what holds the speedometer in place. Now, this one actually is going to the fuel sending unit. A couple of grounds, lights. I'm gonna see if I can sneak it out of the way without pulling all the wires. If not, it's okay. It's hard not to block the camera with this angle. That's why I show you guys pictures of what I'm doing. second I'll show you what's going on come on get off of there okay that's just that's ground so we'll move that out of the way we took pictures Let's take this one out So I was pulling on this, and I guess it's been in there so long that the glass stayed in there. The speedometer looks beautiful. I'm going to have to clean that glass up so it all looks pretty again. So I'm going to leave this lay right here like that. And i got to figure out how to get that glass off without breaking it. Why that did that for? Literally stayed in there. There's the bezel. Let me put my hand on the inside. 
I'm gonna break it, push it around, and here it comes. It shouldn't have came out separately like that, but that's okay. I'll get a new rubber grommet for it and fix it up. Okay, this scrum bezel here should have been around there. It's stuck on there. So that'll end up going back on a speedometer. We'll fix that up. Now, there are four little tabs on the chrome bezel that needs pushed out of the dashboard. So I'm gonna get a pair of needle nose. I'll show you what I mean when I get them all off. But there's four little tabs you gotta straighten up. I unbent the little tabs. Let's pull it out and I'll show you what I was talking about. Okay, this will just pull out and see the little tabs. You just straighten them out and this pulls out. Okay, get yourself a 10 millimeter socket. Let's get the nuts off for the grab handle. They're right up inside of there, you will see them. Like I said, I'm taking this apart because I'm painting the dash and I'm gonna do the old school metal look. But this is a good video for people that wanna put a brand new dash pad on. And that was the bolts for your grab handle. Now, there are little brackets so you don't lose them. Just put them back on there. So you don't want to start losing stuff. Oops, I thought I was in the camera view. So these are your little dash panels on the inside of the vehicle, these ones here. And you're going to be turning the tabs and pulling them out. Now, let me pull you in a little closer. From the factory, it looks like you have some type of clay that's actually dried up and falling apart now i'll show you it's like clay or something and see the little tabs you're gonna straighten them out i don't know my hand's probably gonna be in your way see all you do is straighten those once you straighten them they'll push straight out that's what they'll do okay let me get all four of these real quick Turned all them tabs straight, took the little clay off, okay? And then you're just gonna push this out. And I'll show you what I mean on the inside. And these just pop off. That's all they do. There's there's just little tabs that you push in and you turn and it holds them in place. Here's the other side. Once you straighten them four tabs, it will pull. Yeah, make an idiot of me, of course, out and there's what your little tabs look like. All you're doing is twisting them in place when you put them back through, it's not a big deal. This right here is that brake light, the warning light that comes on. To get this out, we've gotta go into the trunk and there's two little prongs to squeeze and that'll pull out of the dash this way. So let's go under there and look at it. Now, as you can see up inside of here, let me move this out of the way, there's that brake warning light. Okay, you have to pull these two wires off and there's a push clip on each side. When you squeeze them together, it'll pull out towards the inside of the car. So as soon as I squeeze them clips and pull it out, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I squeeze the clips. I'm gonna pull it to the inside. See the clip right there and right there. You have to know these things, it's important because if not, you'll break these parts. But from behind, you just squeeze those two little clips. You can press on them with a screwdriver, whatever, and this will then pull right out, okay? Once you get it in here, you can mark where your wires go and then just disconnect them so we can pull the dash pad off. Now, the next step, what we're gonna do here, so you see where we're at, up inside, right there, and over there, you have a 10 millimeter bolt. 
on each side and it holds the dash in. It's the passenger side. Put this up in here. I know I'm probably in your way anyhow, but there's a little bracket on her, don't lose. I'll show you it once I pull it off here. this little bracket don't lose that I don't know if you can buy them or not so are off now we got to go to the inside now I probably did this a little out of order there's little pins that hold this retaining ring in for the glove box section you're gonna pop these pins out if your retaining ring is in good condition when you take it out you're okay so let's pop these out these will end up breaking off Okay, the bottom three, you've got to pull off from the underside of the lip here. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Once I get this out of the way, they go through the trunk inside. You just pull the clips off. Very easy. Now, I got lucky. My ring is in very nice condition, although I don't believe I'll use it, but I can just buy the pins. So, that's it for that. So, I believe we got everything now, so let's try to pull it off and see if we missed anything. No, we didn't. And there's that beautiful dash pad. Wow, this thing's in really nice condition. Okay. I'll probably give it away or sell it or something. I'm not going to use it. Uh, so, what we'll end up doing, I'm going to get a different vent for this. You can get a vent from Heritage, and it's for the 67s, where this won't stick up in the air, and it'll snap down in, and the other one, so on and so on. So, that's it. That's a part. Let's take a look here, and look how nice this is. Let me put my cheater glasses on. Nobody had hacked this out. What? Here, come here. This piece of vinyl was just glued to it technically but look at that nobody ever hacked that dash out at all that's rare so that's a good thing and i'm gonna go ahead once i pull the doors maybe we'll get the doors off in the next video i need them off and get the seats out and what i'll end up doing is sanding this all down now i'm gonna have to weld that hole shut and the one here. I'll still do a grab handle though. I'll try to get something a little fancier, vintage looking. And that's it. So make sure you mark all your wires. This is the cutout for an old school gas gauge. So in fact, if we wanna go back in time and put the older style trim on like you see here, it'll have some chrome trim running across there, and that's what I plan on doing. Now I can even go old school and put the, the placard there that has the, the dash bezel that has the gas gauge, but I'm probably not doing that. We're gonna have to find an old school ashtray. There's things we'll do, but I wanna take it back in time like you see here and make it look cool. Alrighty, so that's it for that part. Okay, so. That is dash pad removal. I know a couple shots were hard because to get the camera in at the angles on that makes it a little difficult. So that's how you remove the dash pad. Installation is reverse, which I'm gonna be doing Casey soon. That's the videos that you've seen with the drop spindles and out the other guy's car, my buddy. 
I'll do the installation process so you can see that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make this an old school dash, but you're going to follow me through this whole process of this 68. Thanks for being here. See you next time.